Did you know that geoscientists can tell you why Georgia flipped blue in the U.S. 2020 presidential election? We can. So if you look at a map of counties in the southern United States that voted for Joe Biden, you'll notice that it lines up almost perfectly with the geological formation known as the Black Belt. There's a good reason for that. The Black Belt was formed between 145 and 66 million years ago, during the Cretaceous period. And that line was actually the coastline of the eastern United States, which at the time was an island landmass known as Appalachia. As marine plankton died, their skeletons would accumulate on that shoreline and developed into massive chalk formations. Over millions of years, when the oceans eventually receded, these chalk formations led to dark, rich soil throughout this area of the relatively dry south. This soil was ideal for agriculture, and more specifically was ideal for cotton. And as we all know, cotton production required labor, slave labor. I think that Booker T. Washington puts it best. In his 1901 autobiography, Up From Slavery, he writes, quote, I have often been asked to define the term black belt. So far as I can learn, the term was first used to designate a part of the country which was distinguished by the color of the soil. The part of the country possessing this thick, dark, and naturally rich soil was, of course, the part of the South where the slaves were the most profitable, and consequently they were taken there in the largest numbers." End quote. Today, these counties in the so-called Black Belt are some of the only places in America where African Americans make up over 50% of the population. These counties didn't vote blue by chance, and geoscience offers a foundation to understand the current and historical socio-political makeup of the southern United States. And that is why geoscience is so important. It builds connections to real-world problems in a way that physics or chemistry can't do alone. And it's able to build these connections to real-world problems that are of ever-increasing importance. But before I go too far, what even is geoscience? Simply put, geoscience is the study of the Earth, but it's also so much more than that. We're not just talking about rocks here. Geoscience is the study of Earth's systems and how they relate to and interact with one another. Geoscience is an inherently interdisciplinary field that investigates our planet's past, present, and future with the ultimate goal of utilizing our knowledge of Earth's dynamic processes to better understand the issues that face us today. Now, it's important to note that geoscience by itself can't really solve social issues or even explain them all. You'll still need a solid background and understanding of other scientific concepts in things like physics, chemistry, biology, and so on. But what's so important about geoscience is that it offers us a framework to understand these issues. So what makes geoscience unique when we compare it to other scientific fields? It all comes down to the inquiry-based approach and systems thinking that geoscience learning requires. When we teach science, especially at the primary and secondary level, it's not enough to just teach facts. We must actually engage students in the process of science. We have to teach students to observe the world for themselves, to collect their own data. They must learn to analyze what they know and question the facts that are being presented to them. And that's what's so amazing about geoscience. Instead of being told that the Earth is round, you're asked to prove it. But this approach doesn't work for all science courses. It's not like on day one of an introductory chemistry course you can expect students to prove that everything is made up of atoms, for example. Geoscience is uniquely suited for this type of learning because we are surrounded by the Earth and its processes from a very young age, and we're able to observe its systems through everyday interactions. So it's reasonable to ask students to prove that the Earth is round. This type of inquiry-based approach, in fact, forces students to actually engage with the science for themselves, instead of just memorizing facts that they're told are true. And that's why widespread geoscience education at the K-12 level is crucial to build a generation of citizens who are prepared to engage with and make decisions based on scientific material. Geoscience curriculum emphasizes critical science thinking skills like systems thinking, as well as temporal and spatial thinking. Geoscience goes beyond just the study of the Earth. It teaches students how to understand the key concepts of science and how to critically approach everyday problems. To examine science literacy in the United States, we need look no further than the current COVID-19 pandemic to see that we have failed to instill science literacy in generations of students. The rampant distrust of scientists and widespread fake news claims show that American citizens are woefully underprepared and lack the critical thinking skills to engage with science. And that's because generations of students were taught to memorize isolated facts without the process behind obtaining them or the ways in which those facts may interact with one another.
The distrust and politicization of science stems from a lack of understanding. And the only way we can solve that is to educate future citizens so that they understand and can build complex relationships between scientific facts. Beyond scientific literacy, this inquiry-based approach to learning is also important to inclusion. Instead of focusing on tests or content memorization, geoscience's emphasis on understanding the scientific process and the history behind why we know what we know attracts students from a wide variety of academic backgrounds. The fact of the matter is, geoscience's approach to learning is less intimidating and has the ability to reach students who are otherwise excluded from the scientific community. Students who feel that science just isn't for them. And that's because the goal of primary and secondary geoscience education has the ability to be less about creating scientists and instead can focus on actually educating future citizens so that they better understand the world around them. Geoscience is at the crossroads of pretty much every STEAM discipline. That means science, technology, engineering, art, and math. And because of that, it has the opportunity to be a gateway course to the sciences, as well as create a generation of science literate citizens. Yet, despite all of this, geoscience is a dying field. I know that's not a very encouraging thing to hear, but it's the truth. Declining enrollment in geoscience programs, limited, if any, high school or science courses, low retention rates for geoscience graduates, and fewer programs offering geoscience education are all reasons behind a predicted talent gap of over 130,000 geoscientists by 2029. But I want to talk about how we frame this conversation. When we talk about the decline of geoscience, one of the things that's always brought up is this idea that geoscience isn't viewed as a hard science. It's this idea that geology or earth science aren't perceived as a rigorous or exact science, unlike other fields like chemistry and physics. And it's definitely true that geology has a complicated reputation when it comes to the scientific community, and it's not really undeserved. I mean, of all scientists, economic geologists are the most likely to be climate deniers even though we literally see evidence for anthropogenic climate change in the rock record. Geoscientists were the first scientists to identify the fact that the climate was changing, and yet the only geologist to ever walk on the moon is a climate change denier. Oh, and let's not forget Ryan Zinke, Trump's Secretary of the Interior from 2017 to 2019, who has a BS in geology, claims to be a geoscientist despite having never worked in the field, who repeatedly denied the science behind anthropogenic climate change, despite advocating for clean energy to combat anthropogenic climate change during the Obama administration. I mean, there's a reason why the scientific community looks down on geoscience, but that's a different conversation. What I'm trying to say here is that we shouldn't shy away from all of the assumptions. Yes, geoscience courses are often assumed to be easy or fun, especially when we compare them to other introductory science courses. But that's not an entirely undeserved assumption. An introductory geology course will probably be more accessible and easier to students than introductory physics or chemistry. And that's exactly what's so valuable about how geoscience is perceived by students. Instead of moving away from this idea that introductory geoscience courses are just rocks for jocks, we need to embrace it. We have to stop working to identify geosciences as a hard science, because in doing so, we push away the very students who will save this field. So if not that, then why is geoscience declining? Well, low levels of ethnic, racial, and gender diversity among geoscientists, a perceived lack of workforce relevance, aging populations of geoscientists, and a declining supply of secondary science teachers are contributing factors to the downfall of the earth science field at a time when it has never been more relevant. Of all scientific fields, geoscience is the least diverse. And we know this to be true. And this lack of diversity has a substantial impact on our ability to attract students to this field. And that's coming at a time when geoscience is already struggling to maintain and build enrollment in undergraduate programs. As the world shifts away from a dependence on oil and gas, college students are unwilling to major in a field that they feel depends upon the success of a dying industry. This perceived lack of workforce relevance is a major issue for geoscience. Students place value on the applicability of their major to an industry, and geoscience is feeling the impacts of this in a big way. In the next nine years, there will be a predicted talent gap of over 130,000 geoscientists, just like I said before. So how do we solve this? And what does that mean for the future of geoscience education? Well, science education in the United States is already undergoing a period of reform. Either geoscience will revive itself and lead this charge, or it's going to slowly fizzle out. 
Right now, many states are shifting to meet standards known as the Next Generation Science Standards, or NGSS for short. The Next Generation Science Standards are a series of guidelines for interdisciplinary K-12 science that dictate what students should know and be able to do. They were introduced in 2013 and have been adopted by 20 states as well as the District of Columbia. And then 24 other states have developed their own science standards, and those were based on the same framework that the NGSS were based upon. So the Next Generation Science Standards are intended to improve science education for all Americans by standardizing specific content and subject areas, integrating the teaching of content with the teaching of the process of science and engineering, as well as emphasizing something called cross-cutting concepts, which are these key underlying ideas that are applicable across a variety of scientific subjects. If these goals sound familiar, that's because they should. Geoscience education is already centered on these same concepts. The nature of geoscience makes it uniquely well-suited to adopt the next generation science standards. And really, for geoscience to succeed, these standards are probably the best chance, specifically because they emphasize the earth science curricula. But beyond that, we're also headed into an era of socially responsive teaching, and geoscience is easily able to adapt to that. Because of its focus on real-world issues and the world around you, geoscience Education means educators can easily develop lesson plans that center on students' communities and are able to react to place-based learning. We're also able to develop intersectional curriculum that focus on problems that exist at the individual, institutional, and cultural historical level. And that has the capacity to build diversity within the geo community. Because we know that we have a diversity problem, but the only way that we're going to be able to solve it is by interrogating its problems. Furthermore, I would encourage us to have all pre-service science teachers in K-12 learning take geology courses, not only because of the important ways of thinking that it builds, like systems thinking and an inquiry-based approach, but also because it can show teachers how to learn, or it can teach teachers how to teach science in what is a culturally responsive way. We should also give current science educators the opportunity to work with higher education institutions and professional societies so that they can learn geoscience as well as incorporate new practices into their own classrooms. But this can't be solved by teacher training alone. In order to truly solve this issue, we need to talk about representation. We have to find an effective way of reframing geoscientists as people other than just white men. Locally, this means outreach in classrooms. We must demonstrate to students that being a geoscientist doesn't just mean that you're a scientist. That being a geoscientist doesn't mean that you leave your identity at the door. Instead, you know that your identity interacts, intersects, and informs the work that you do. And ultimately, this focus on outreach is key. At places like Smith, this means outreach programs with nearby schools, with a focus on underserved communities, especially when we talk about things like outdoor learning, which are not as likely to occur at schools that don't have as much funding. We're at a critical point right now in the history of geoscience education, because we can't go back to 20 years ago, to the way things were under the shadow of the oil and gas industry, so it's time for us to either adapt or fail.